In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a 1.4 Ecotec Chevy Cruze. Maybe you already know how to change oil, but you don't know what to look for when you're looking your car over. Well, if you stick around throughout the video, I'm going to show you the basics on what to look for. Today, I'm using Mobile One Advanced Full Synthetic 5W30. You can use whatever brand you want, just make sure it's Dexos approved. And I'm using Wix Filter. And the Wix filter I'm using also applies to the 1.8 engine. Um, if you guys can find better stuff, more power to you, but this is what I'm going to be using. First step we got to do is take the oil filter off, and you need a 15, 16 socket, and then you just go around the oil filter. You guys can see that or not, can you? Okay, filters out. Okay, with the filter already off, now you can see we have an O-ring that needs to come off. Now, next up we open the box and you get a new filter and this is where it clicks onto. And you also get a new o-ring and it just slot goes over and make sure it's in the groove okay now take some oil and just go around go around the o-ring make sure it's all lubed up then take your oil filter then click it in place you'll hear an audible click and Okay, it's on there. Now you put it back in the engine. Okay. Now you just tighten it down clockwise. And remember, you don't need to put this down tight. Because this is made of plastic and if you break this you got to get a new cap then yeah when you, with the engine running it'll leak all over the place just just snug just like that and okay now onto the bottom all right we have the car lifted up and right here is the drain plug it is a 10 millimeter And you warm, you remove it by turning it counterclockwise. And oh my god, this is gonna be hot. Okay, while we let that drain, I'm gonna show you a couple other tricks. Okay, one little tip to check to see if your suspension is good is put your hand, one hand at 3 o'clock and one at 9 o'clock and you shake it back and forth to check your tie rod ends and in this case it's good. The other is to check at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock for your ball joints which in this case, which is also good. Also, if you have a bad wheel bearing you'll feel play like all around the wheel no matter where you put your hands and 
that case, you'll definitely be replacing some components. Also, if it's a bad wheel bearing, you might also be replacing brake rotors and pads because it's not evenly wearing because it's going to be random. Because when during a bad wheel bearing, it's going to be flopping around due to steering and driving down the road and bumps and it's going to unevenly wear out the rotor and pads. So you'll definitely look into that when you're replacing the wheel bearing. All right. I think that's long enough. All right, put the drain plug back in and turn it clockwise to turn it down. And as you can see, Right over the drain plug, there's a torque spec on there, 14 newton meters. It's not over tight. About that much. And if you go tighter than that, you'll strip out the plug and the pan. And this pan is not fun to get off of. It wasn't too bad, but I had a lift at the time. And what I was doing there was I was replacing the gas. Actually, it was an RTV. Oh my god. Sorry, I can't, camera fell over. As I was saying, the RTV failed on the oil pan. And I had to reseal that, and it was leaking really badly. But, point is, don't strip out the drain plug. Before we go back up, take a look around, make sure you don't find any leaks. Right over there, I'm not sure if that's from the last time I changed the oil and had brake lean running down here, um, or if that's from the transmission itself, but I'm just going to wipe it off after this and call good. And, yeah, check to make sure that the... Our TV gasket didn't fail all around the oil pan. And if you see any oil further up from this point, it's either going to be the turbo outlet oil line or the inlet or the oil cooler adapter o rings that are leaking if it's coming from the front. see much under here so I'm calling that good also you're gonna to want to go around your tire and just feel it see if you feel any unevenness bumps if it grabs onto your hand you'll know it's feathered and yeah in my case this is this is good I'll throw in a chart in the corner to show you the different types of wear like if it's worn more towards here you're gonna have a camber issue and you'll require an alignment or if it's like wear down right up over the top of the tire it's gonna be over inflated also I want to check your brakes out I don't know if you can tell but mine has a slight discoloration to it which means it's glaze and it's been screeching sometimes when I'm driving which I kind of thought that was a clause. So I'll be looking to do brakes later. And I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's getting close to due time to do front pads and rotors. I already did I already did the rear pads and rotors a few months ago, so yeah, I'm not worried about another suspension check for struts is I don't know if you can see that, but it's oily, which means the seal that surrounds the rod is leaking. And over time, it's going to lose oil. And then eventually, you'll hear a clunking noise when you go over bumps. And, yeah, when you're replacing struts, you'll also want to get sway bar links. Because when you try and take them loose, it usually spins free from the rod. And then it may pop out, causing an audible 
clunking noise when you're going over bumps as well. And well, a dead giveaway for sway bar links is usually when you throw the wheel side to side and you hear a clunking noise. Um, so yeah. All right, time to pour in the oil. All right, I'm gonna fire it up real quick and check the oil. Okay, I poured in about four and a half quarts. I believe that's what it takes. We'll check it with the dipstick. It's about where we want it. Okay, you guys can see that. Okay, now you're going to want to double check for oil leaks, especially down by the canister. Make sure the oil ring's not leaking out. And it looks like we're good. Alright, really quickly, I'm going to tell you a couple common issues with the 1.4 because I got to get going on that car. Um, look out for the video on that one because I'm going to be doing that one next. Um, anyways, there, this little vacuum diaphragm hold on let me adjust the light this little vacuum diaphragm fails and when it fails it sets off a vacuum code and when that does you replace the valve cover that's not serviceable by itself and i have not run into this issue yet but apparently there's like a pc valve that fails in the intake i don't know i didn't look too much into it i don't have any codes for it but I know there's also kits on some forums where you can bypass that or modify the intake or whatever. I haven't had any issues, so I don't really have much to say on my personal experience. And, man, the lighting's horrible. Hold on. And just typical engine problems. Water pumps do fail. I just did mine like five months ago. And I used an Amazon part. So I think the gasket failed. You may not be able to see it. But further down there. You can see coolant. Kind of build up along the side of the engine. I'll definitely look into it in the future. I might even do it. Leave a comment if you want to see a video about that. Um, so yeah. Further ado. Sorry, it's all acting up. And uh, yeah, the I may have touched touched a little bit about this when I was down under. Um, the oil adapter O rings they do fail, and when they do fail, they leak down towards the front of the engine, and the oil outlet pipes to the turbo they do leak the o-ring fails and then you just replace them they're not too bad as far as price wise i think i think i bought mine for like 30 bucks and the under boost code for the turbos i i've had the code once and then i cleared the code and this was like about a year ago and it never came back on um, I don't know, the tur I was told that the turbos do fa fail, I don't know what part of them fails, I think the, uh, it cracks and then it leaks up all the boost, I'm not sure, haven't, haven't had that, haven't had that many issues with this car, 
other than I replaced the transmission, but I think that's user error because I happened about two winters ago and I was thrashing around with the you know manual stick with the auto manual stick feature going through the snow and stuff and then I lost third gear and then from there and, the, and I was told that the spring clip to the clutch pack fails and it broke and so yeah I had to buy a $4,000 transmission so yeah again I believe that's user error Well guys, I hope this video was very informative to you. To see more videos like this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this, and I hope I see you in the next one.